And I lost my place. <laughs> Amen. Well, hey, we want to thank everybody for coming by here. And uh, this is what we're trying to get going on this Bible study we're going to call uh, the Berean Carnivore. And so we got, this is Brother Matt, KJB Truth, and we've got uh, Brother Bob Nabtusky with us. And uh, he's going to bring us a message. I believe he's going to start in the book of Revelation. And we're going to call this one, uh, I Know Thy Word. Amen. So we're looking forward to seeing what the Lord has for us here. And as you may know, the Laodicean church age is um, is a type of a uh, backslidden spirit that a church can have on it. And also those letters of the churches are um, symbolic and can be traced. You can trace back church history and see that uh, throughout church history, it's had similar aspects of that. But it is also seven different types of spirits that a church can have about it. And a church is made up of individuals. So if a church can have that spirit about it, so can you. So you don't want to be a Laodicean Christian. A Laodicean Christian would be something like probably the Corinthians that are getting rebuked by Paul um, all the time right there. And he didn't really have two too much good to say about them they were just a carnal bunch of babies that needed to grow up amen so um brother bob we'll go ahead and if you're ready you can uh, take it from there all right uh well, i'm going to call this i know thy works jeremiah chapter 10 23 oh lord i know that the way of man is not in himself it is not in man that walketh to direct his steps O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. So judgment isn't always bad, but it can be. We're correct with judgment and not in the Lord's anger. It is good for us, and it is edifying. Now, we're going to turn to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, God knows our works. We're going to be judged for every idle word we speak. He will judge us for the thoughts and the intents of a heart. Now, if a man looks upon a woman with lust, he has committed adultery in his heart. Now, that's a, a sin that is within him. Out of the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. In the workplace, you hear the comments of guys, they're looking for sex, not for a wife, not for a mother, for the children. They just want the physical. They want the lust. They want to fulfill the lust, usually with drunkenness and maybe some pot, cocaine, or some other type of drugs. That is what's in their heart, so that's the things that they speak of. But God knows our works. He's going to bring every secret thing into judgment. But what about the church? He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. That's all or nothing. Ladies, if you're going to be running around showing different parts of your flesh, you might as well show it all. Be cold or hot. Keep it all covered. Be, you know, Jesus would rather you be cold or hot. It needs to be modest. In Isaiah chapter 3, starting with verse 16, these women weren't adulteresses. They weren't fornicators. They weren't harlots. They just did things, decorated themselves to get men's attention. So if a man looks upon a woman with lust and he commits adultery in his heart, then how much more would a man lust when he is enticed? When a woman tries to draw out that lust, whether to get a discount uh, at an auto mechanic place or when you have trouble uh, you know, in a store, you need to get a manager doing the little flirting thing and 
the swaying, the showing of your body to get your way. That's just as evil as men looking around, desiring it. And what do men think of? Oh, they think, and they'll go and they'll talk about their idols, their sports figures. They'll brag about their team, the touchdowns or the home runs or however many baskets were made and this and that happened. And they will glory in that thing, but they don't know how to glory in the Lord. And these are so-called Christian men who go to work and Monday is all about the football game not about what they learned in Bible study or what they learned in church. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. See, the lukewarm is a double-minded man who is unstable in all his ways. Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Well, isn't that the attitude today? Oh, we're not under the law. We're under grace. Yeah, Jesus forgave me. I don't sin anymore. Well, wait a minute. Yes, we do sin. And if we sin, we have one advocate between the Father, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for our sins. <clears throat> now, thinking that we're rich, okay, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, I got this, I got that, I got my rewards. Are those rewards coming according to the scriptures? Uh, do the rewards fit in? Uh, say like with Malachi 3, verses 16 and 17. Matt, can you pull that up? Yeah, where is that Malachi 3? 3, 16 and 17, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> My e sword is getting an update now. Gotcha. <laughs> I can't believe this. There you go, brother. Of course, it's going to happen. Yes, and they yes. that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened. Oh, God, I had to move the thing over and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that number one feared the lord number two and that thought upon his name amen they shall be mine saith the lord of hosts in that day when i make up my jewels i will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him so part of those heavenly treasures are being able to Speak upon the Lord, speak of his, or speak about the Lord, speak based upon his word. When men get together or women get together and they talk about the Lord, share what's written in the pages of his book, Iron Sharpens Iron. So, God, God knows our works. When we glorify him, one of the books that are opened is the book of remembrance. So when we speak of him, when we teach, when we preach, when we share the gospel, when we just fellowship in the word amongst friends, God puts so much importance on that. He puts that in his eternal book. It is not wood. It is not hay. It is not stubble. This is a work that will be tried by the fire and endure. Now let us come on. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salves that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. So, when we ask God to judge us according to his tender mercies, he helps us grieve over our sin. He shows us our sin more as he sees it, so we can cry out to him and say, hey, forgive me, Lord, cleanse me, remove this from me, help me walk upright before you. It's for our edification, not for his own pleasure. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him 
and I will sup with him, and he with me. That's interesting. This verse is used for soul winning, and it's saying Jesus is knocking at your door. No, this is said to the church where Jesus is not welcome. He's knocking at the door saying, come out from her and be ye separate. He's looking for a man to let him in. If you're in an environment like that, you hear him calling to you, and no one else in your fellowship seems to be hearing it, answer him. Get in his word. Seek him. Look at the Psalms. Learn the things to pray about. Look at the epistles. Learn those kind of things. That's how he comes in and sups with you. Let's turn to the beginning of chapter 3, and we're going to look at a little bit at the church of Sardis. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, which Matt covered earlier, and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Which is um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So, in a way, this church was alive, in a way, it was dead. And the things that, that were ready to die were the things from the Word of God. Verse 3 the things we have received and heard we need to hold fast on to and repent. So one of the things that were dying in this church was the conviction of sin. But yet Jesus is standing at the door and knocking. And if any hear his voice and open the door, he will come in to you and will sup with you and you with him. This is for the Christian. Now, Let's turn to John chapter 15. Verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So sometimes, as a, a branch has to be pruned, the dead part cut off, or even some of the living parts, it has to be cut back so that it will bear more fruit. Yes, it's a painful process, but that's part of remembering how that has received and heard and hold fast and repent. God does this for our benefit. Why does he do it for our benefit? For his name's sake. So that his word is true. He promised and he will do it. Now on this side of it, we may not like it. But on the other side, we will be grateful that he did it. Amen. So, um, now, verse 3, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken of you. Well, isn't that buying uh, garments? That the church of the Laodiceans should have had bought. Amen. So they wouldn't be naked. So. For the church of Laodicea. If they were naked. They had no righteousness. Or if they did have righteousness. It was not Christ's righteousness. But rather self-righteousness. Therefore that is. One type of biblical nakedness. Verse 4. Abide in me. And I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except ye abide in the vine, no more can ye, except you abide in me. So, we have to abide in Christ. How do we do that? Verse says, it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. 
people say given unto you, but done. So this might be, hey, remove this sin, remove that sin. Help me with my anger, with my lust, with my pride. You know, cleanse me. So when we abide in him, we are abiding in his word. His word is a living word. It's alive. It grows. It cleanses. It washes. Let's turn to Psalm chapter 1. I'm not going too fast, am I? No, you're doing good, brother. All right. Psalm chapter 1. Remember, God says, I know thy works. Blessed is a man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. <clears throat> so, when we get the counsel of the ungodly and try to live according to their ways, ah, uh, you don't need a husband, dearie. Just apply for social benefits. They'll get housing, food stamps. You don't need a man to provide for you. But then... The children grow up, you have trouble, you can't control them, then you want that guy to step in. Well, hey, you gave him the marriage benefits without him taking on the responsibility of a man to provide for the family, to be the spiritual leader of the family, to watch over there, to pray for them, to raise the kids, to teach them what's right, to teach them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the Word of God. And you wonder why the children go haywire? Well, it's because of sin. And if it's your own fault, well, yes, there is mercy with the Lord. But sometimes uh, the mercy or the help won't until the deed won't come until you have repented of those deeds. Amen. So, yeah. Or stand in the way of. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you can choose what way you walk. And then one more scripture to support what Brother Bob just said is, He that confesseth and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy. A lot of people just want to confess them, but they don't want to forsake them. Amen. Now, standing in the way of sinners, it's like going down to the bar with your buddies, going out behind the building to smoke a joint, uh, going around, say, chasing the women, you know, watching the ungodly things through the media, listening to ungodly music. That means you, you are doing the things they do. If you're in the way of carpentry, you are a carpenter. In the way of an electrician, you are an electrician. Yeah. I think you get the idea. Or when you sit in the seat of the scornful, Ah, those people that accuse everybody. Well, wasn't Satan count, called the uh, accuser of the brother of the brethren? Yes. All those people who complain about the boss, complain about the co-workers, or the husband that's always complaining about the the wife or the children or the wife complaining about the husband or this one or that one, these people that are always scorning the other people. Well, hey, if you're in the counsel of the ungodly, you're doing sinful things and you're scornful, you are not blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed, maybe? Ah, but the next word in verse 2 is but. But interjects a a change of condition. Amen. So, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Uh, Matt, while I talk, can you call up uh, Matthew chapter 25? Sure. And I'll tell you which verses in a minute. So now, meditation is, it's not a mindless emptying sorry i lost my esor to to an update <laughs> amen yeah no problem i had a verse to add to that it says that the um the curse of the lord is in the house of the wicked but he blesseth the habitation of the upright 
Ah, that's very good. Yeah. At first, when he said, okay, we're going live, I flipped my Bible shut. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get started. It's like, okay, something. But, uh, yeah, not then he scored win, but we'll get through this. Yeah, we always get ourselves in trouble when we start trusting this technology, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now, if the man's delight is in the law of the Lord, he does meditate day and night. This is what meditation is. Sit there and try to recall as many verses to mind as you can. You know, it's not like listening to some music and get relaxed and into a trance or clearing your mind or taking a, a syllable, sitting in a certain yoga position and just chanting the whole thing over and over again. It's not a mantra. No. Uh, and Jeremiah says, This I recalled to my mind, and therefore I had hope. It is because of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. Amen. So what Jeremiah was doing, he was recalling to his mind the word of God. So as you try to think on the scriptures, and you know where they are and you don't get them, Turn from page to page, read the scriptures, and then as you call other ones to mind, think of them, recite them, read them, and the more you learn of the scriptures, and this is Jesus' words abiding in you, and then the Holy Spirit can guide you in all truths, whether it's the truths of your sin for cleansing, well, we don't like that, but doesn't that bring us closer to the Lord? Doesn't it make his mercy that much sweeter? Doesn't that cleanse us? Mm -hmm. So he uh, gives us the desires of our hearts. Amen. Doesn't that give us wisdom? Doesn't that give us understanding? Because our sin has separated us from God. The soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. But when we do that, that's also putting on the robes of righteousness. Now, yes, these uh, churches in Revelation were before, and now they're not, but they're also a type of the end times. Nice. And um, so there are types of the things that are going on. Now we have churches that are neither hot nor cold, but they're, lukewarm and um, that seems to be one of the biggest problems today and we also need to strengthen the things that remain well what remains are the things of God heaven and earth shall pass away but the word shall endure forever we have to strengthen the word of God in our heart we have to learn the Word of God. We have to study it. We have to pray over it. Now, I'm going to have to bear with me now. I'm going to find out verse about uh, meat to the household. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. One more verse to support what Brother Bob was just saying about, um, and that was excellent, about abiding in his word, and that's like meditating in it. So you're going through those things, you're applying them in your life. Uh, situations start in your life, and instead of answering with quotes from a movie or quotes from a song that the devil taught you, you're quoting Bible. And the Bible says right here in Ephesians 5, that he wanted to uh, sanctify and cleanse his church by the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So just like he was saying how it cleanses you and it adds that righteousness to you, uh, Revelation 19.8 says that this is the righteousness of the saints. Amen, that those white garments were the righteousness of the saints. All right, go ahead, Bob, if you're ready. Now, I'm um, still looking for it. Okay. Oh, Matthew 24, 45, wrong chapter. <laughs> okay, there you go, 24, 45. Oh, well, I got a two and a five right. There you go. That's not too bad, amen. Um, okay. Oh, now, one of the things, uh, 
you know, we're supposed to be ready for when the Lord comes. You know, uh, if we have a blessed hope of his glorious appearing, a man will purify himself. So like the Laodiceans and the uh, church of Sardis, they need to be purified. And that way, you know, strengthen of the word. When you get the word in you, that's you abiding in Christ and Christ abiding in you. So part of being ready for when the Lord returns is found here in chapter 24. Uh, we'll start with verse 44. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? That is a question. Now everybody thinks, well, maybe getting rid of sin, uh, you know, always, every swap, well, yeah, I got to confess this, I got to confess that to be ready. God said, who is that wise servant that has given meat to the household? Whereas uh, Matt mentioned earlier that verse in Corinthians where Paul says, I can only give you milk because you're babes and you can't bear the meat now. <laughs> well, wait a minute, how long had they been saved? They can't bear the meat. Well, you see, uh, well, it's also uh, in Hebrews too. But you see, when you are... Of meat bearing, meat bearing. Um, when you can have the meat and you get off the milk, you are growing towards maturity, which is a constant process. But when you can have the meat, some of the meat is tender and some you got to really chew. <laughs> but when you get that, then you can give meat to the household, and that's part of being ready for the, when the Lord returns. So whoever has his hope purifies themselves. Well, when you're purified, you can give meat to the master's household. So God knows your works. You know, there's some preachers out there who give a little story with man's wisdom. I think it was, was it Hebrew or uh, Proverbs 419 that covers that? Let's take a look at that. Yeah. Four nineteen. The way of wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. No, there's a one that just that uh that I sent you. Okay. Uh hang on. Yeah, I don't happen to have my tablet open right now, so I First can't actually. First John 4 or 5. First John 4 5. All right. Yes. All right. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Exactly. That's it. Now, you get these people from the pulpit or on the radio or on the internet, and they're speaking of worldly things. They're not going. Upon a thus saith the Lord type of uh, platform, they are wrong. They have the spirit of error. The word of God interprets itself. It's supposed to be precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. One is so that we may know him get into the rest of God. Uh, we don't have time to go. There is so that the non-believer can be taken backwards and snared. So God says, I know thy works. So these ones that speak of the world and their experiences, yeah, they might read a couple of scriptures and uh, maybe have you flip to a couple places, but they teach the word of God from worldly experience. The world hears them in these churches. And the Sunday morning is for witnessing to the lost. Well, it's not a church if it's a gathering of lost and Christian. Only Christians are part of the church. What fellowship has light with darkness and righteousness 
with unrighteousness. Now, God knows our works. These people are doing it for filthy lucre. That's filthy gain. That means they're doing it to get the tithe in the offering plate. They're trusting man to give them their living, not dependent on the Lord God who created them to provide for them. But Jesus says, I know thy works. A mother who comforts her child, nurtures that child, reads the Psalms to it, teaches them to pray. The father that teaches the child the scriptures and prays over the family, guides him, tries to show him wisdom and understanding, teaches them about Jesus. God says, I know thy works. When you give to the poor because your heart breaks that the poor has needed of something, Jesus says, I know thy works. When you share the gospel because you don't want this person to go to hell, Jesus says, I know thy works. So we need to get the word in us, strengthen the things that remain, be cleansed, then the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truths. He will teach us who to help, what to do, what to say. So one day Jesus will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. I'm going to close with that, Matt. Okay. Awesome. Um, you know, I was going to take a look at 2 Corinthians 6 right there. Um, and that sure. says that you're not straightened in us but you're straightened in your own bowels. Okay. And, um, and that's right here. And he says uh, his heart was enlarged onto him that you're not straightened in us, but you're straightened in your own bowels. Amen. And, um, so the Lord wants things. Notice, to... Yeah, go ahead. Straight, not straight. I'd like to explain to people. Uh huh. It's not like the shortest distance between two points. It's straight as in tight in the narrow way. Narrow way isn't a, you know, going from A to B. It may take a whole bunch of zigzags and twists and turns like the Straits of Magellan or Dire Straits or going between fjords. But very, very narrow path. Aren't our bowels all curvy? Yeah. But yeah. It's a straightened way. It constrains. It pulls the food out, digests it, and compiles the waste to remove it Amen. that is straightened and going back to sardis yeah and that's awesome and going back to sardis where um where bob was preaching from he says be watchful and strengthen those things which remain which are ready to die for i have not found thy works perfect Amen. Perfect before God. And so that's the Lord. Amen. His eyes are as a flame of fire and he's going to try your works, whether they be wood, hay and stubble or silver, gold and precious things. You know what he says right here? Receive not the grace of God in vain. And the Bible says to not take the name of God in vain. Amen. And that's not just necessarily uh, using it as a cuss word, though that's one way you could take it in vain. That's a vain way to use his name. But when you read in Proverbs chapter 30, and he says, lest I take the name of my God in vain, that means he's not living up to it. And when we name the name of Jesus Christ, we need to not take it in vain. We need to not take his grace in vain. We need to not trample it underfoot. We need to not spit in the face of the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we choose to, um, to purposely sin and do other things like that, we are spitting in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, 